opening montage ka maternity rights, then you come to us. Can I have the, the link? Jim Perez Zakat. Is it? Anyway, two in a three minutes. I hope the other thing is said. We have three minutes. Chokate tuna testing a sound wa Judith. Link to Jireke. To Jireke link. What's up when you copy in Jagala Kuvin to be Anjau? Catch in two minutes. Native TV. Judith, mm -hmm. uh, we'll let you know when you're talking because I think we needed to have done that earlier. But it's like the normal Zoom. It's just that when we ask you to talk, you talk. And uh, maybe don't talk for a long time so that we respond. We thank you just to listen and be able to talk and to mute your microphone when you're not talking. Only. Uh, Unmute it when we have asked you to talk. And hopefully there are no people in the background to make noise. But if it's on mute, we won't have issues. Yeah, and we start in a bit. So please be on the alert. Thank you. Uh, native TV. Edit. Copy. Um, Kakati simani over how will you guys be tagged? Nenda ba we simu. Okay, I've posted. We have one minute. Start running the thing. The video? No, we start with this. Then I'll call the video after greeting people. Okay, are you start? Have you started? Have you started? Twitter, ways Twitter. It's it's a running. It should be running. It's now midday. Anyone maternity rights? Oh my God. Is it running online? Not a Twitter one. Okay. We're back over I am coming. I'm introducing our band. Somebody take my phone. Who is going to do my WhatsApp? Can you do my Twitter? Okay. Where is the Twitter? Establishment 
Hello everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining us on Maternity Rights. My name is Sarah Chizan Sigaye. I'll be your moderator and very excited to host. Uh, first of all, on my left, that's my left, right? Mm -hmm. Sister Ajilon. Yeah, I'm, I'm just privileged and honored to, to be hosting Sister Ajilong because uh, she's an amazing lady. She is guilty in a good way <laughs> for steering Kawala Health Facility from the worst to the best health facility in the country in as far as handi handling child and maternity or mothers in labor. I think she will elaborate more. Welcome. Thank you so much. Wonderful to have you. Thank you, Sarah. And congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Wow, it's such an honor to have you. <laughs> you yeah, on the extreme left is Vicent Lusambia. I think I will even start calling him native sometimes. <laughs> Because if we had you here last week, you might not have agreed with him, but I'm not going to, to go back to what he said, <laughs> maybe later after the show. And um, he's a journalist and uh, also a blogger. And he, incidentally, uh, also uh, an advocate, uh, an RMC, Respectful Maternity Care Advocate. And I, I look forward to hearing what he has to share with us in as far as uh, um, handling differently abled mothers is concerned in health facilities. I'm also excited that online joining us from all the way in Gulu is uh, Alex Lawoko. Uh, Alex Lawoko is an amazing person. Is, um, I was privileged to, to, to be a cohort with him in US in 2012. Oh my God, already 10 years I'm going to start not missing the, the, the year because now people might start counting my age. <laughs> Anywho, he, he is an amazing person. He is the executive director, Septran, but he is also the team leader and chairperson of Gulu Deaf Association. Now, uh, you might want to know that Alex conducted a study uh, on the state of health facilities and how they handle differently abled mothers. Uh, some people might say who are differently abled mothers. Uh, people have been using the language disabled and uh, in the development world now we are getting away from that and saying because there's been this saying of disability is not inability so we are saying differently abled mothers and i look forward to, to to hearing from him but let's start with you welcome what do you have to to say about the topic briefly before we go into yeah thank you so much sarah my name is isaj long dorothy i'm in charge kawala health center for i'm so honored to be invited here today thank you for accepting and our invitation i'm very happy for the for the area that you have looked at and i I'm very confident that um, I'm passionate about it. So we are, we are very well positioned to receive the disabled the mothers. Oh, you are? Yeah. I'd like to hear more about that yes. when the program starts. Okay, Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Vicence, what do you have to say about this topic? Uh, well, thank you so much, Ms. Moderator. It's nice once again. I've got a new here. title, Ms. Moderator. Don't call me Sigaya again. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. And um, without further ado, as we link to our friends, Judith, we have Judith um, Chichoncho from White Tribune Alliance, Uganda. She is a midwife, an amazing lady, but also she is the program's uh, manager for White Tribune Alliance, Uganda. White Tribune Alliance, Uganda are our partners. It is thanks to them and support from USAID, Uganda, that we have this program. And White Ribbon Alliance is a reproductive health organization that believes no mother should die while bringing a life to this world. We'll be hearing more because last week I saw she had written an interesting article of how she was in a supermarket and she saw a ma an expectant mother in queue and the expectant mother was like nobody was caring about that so that speaks to community but it also speaks about our other public spaces and how they actually factor in their programming mothers 
who are expectant, but also different abled mothers. So I, I, I was a bit taken aback because I was like, okay, I've, I've never even thought about the need for public spaces like supermarkets to incorporate. Although when we were growing up, my, my, my memories feature, like if you see a pregnant lady, you're in a taxi, you, you actually create room. If you don't know them and they're carrying luggage, you help them. So it also speaks to community, to culture, to the virtues, native voices, and our virtues, celebrating the best virtues. And I'd like to hear more from that, in, 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 from Judith. Do you think that's where we should go? But before we say that, uh, we had a training uh, some time back, a while back, and one of our trainees, Charles, works for Septran. Um, he did a video on differently abled mothers, but specifically targeting um, the deaf mothers and how the challenges they experience. I think looking at that video, it was done by trainees, so it's amateur video, but looking at that video will shed light into this topic and why it's important to plan for them. I'd like to hear more, but to the technical team, Sozi, Alan, and Eva, can we have that video, please? Is Judith set? Communication between the deaf and the hearing people is a big problem in Uganda today. The deaf highly depend on sign language and yet most people are not exposed to sign language. Communication thus becomes so hard, leaving the deaf in a dilemma, thinking of what to do next. We thus made a follow-up of some deaf people and interviewed them about their experiences when they go to seek for health services. We started with a lady by the name of Esther, who lives in Tinda, located in Kampala, Central Uganda. Esther is a mother of three children, who are actually not deaf. She has gone to hospital for antenatal care and delivery for all her three children. But Esther explains that communication between the practitioners is worse when it comes to the sound. Reaching at Kiswahili Health Center was another step we took. We were able to hear from some nurses and midwives who work in this hospital. Morning, my dear. I'm in a talk show, but when I'm done, I'll call you. Sorry, and thanks. But some come on their own. So when they come, some know how to write. So we can communicate to them through writing. We will write what you want to ask, and then they answer through writing. Some who use sign language, they don't know how to write, but of course our sign language is not that best, because we'll never go through that. So once I was at hospital, I actually sat for a long time. Then after some time, I decided to use um, a sheet of paper that I had to communicate what my problem was. So we explained the treatment with the doctor who told me to wait for a long time. We were also able to talk to Sebata Julius, who works at Uganda School for the Deaf, formed in Jinda as the school carpenter. He is a deaf man and he has been able to take us through his experience as he goes to seek for health services in hospitals. So, um, Hospital, um, it's very challenging to communicate with 
you know, sometimes I'm explaining what, what you are doing, what you are doing, what you are doing, and sometimes you know, when you guys share English, it's very complicated for me to understand. So normally what I do is I blow all this stuff, so I point my touch where I can do it, which is the thing I'll touch on the So sometimes um, the doctor will use the point where the pharmacy is. But the doctor will use the point where the pharmacy is. So what I think is important is um, to uh, study sign language. So sometimes, um, so sometimes um, in the hospital, I need to get the sign language interpreter. Is Alex on now? So um, I wish the hospital can actually adjust that. Okay, but we're not trying to kill a co. What you want? Jack saw cover, no, then in Moyte. That you can, maybe you can guess what they are trying to make. But when it comes to their the road to find language, most times we are off. So we try to get that. Alexa, in the two lemmas. First, we want to know, like asking the complaints they have. Sometimes we write. If someone comes alone, she doesn't know how to talk. We write. Asking questions and they write as they answer. But when we go to lemmas, so it's cool. <laughs> it's tough. Some. Um, when we saw the woman to come there, she was still, the sun decided to hide, you know, the children were coming, they knew they don't come back. But there's this particular one who I got to, a piece of paper, and, and that's the one who actually reduced for them there. And so they could put out the file, and they could try to tell them what they're saying, because they know, they're just going to raise it, and they can't get that close. And so then they could announce, they could announce the end, you know, I'm going to sit here, so. I couldn't understand it and I had no interpreter, so I didn't actually get stuck. According to the challenges faced by the deaf, Esther and Julia feel that something should be done as far as sign language is concerned. By this, they think the government should intervene and help to put an end to these challenges. I personally think if there are enough resources there, then the government should carry out trainings for both doctors and nurses in sign language. This will ease the communication for deaf people. Or announcements should be done. So whoever is interested in undertaking sign language should come for training. We have such trainings at your hand. We can get like short courses on sign language. It's okay for every health practitioner. Or at times, they can bring people back and get the rights. I personally think the government should come up with a scheme, like an insurance scheme, of targeting deaf people to access free services. And the government will be in charge of these services. Any service, for example, if an interpreter is um, appointed to offer any service, then it will be free of charge. And then um, the database will also be created for all deaf people in the country. And whenever a deaf person goes to access services, then the services should be offered free of charge. You know, the challenge we have is most deaf people out there are faced a lot of challenges without any solution. And so they get a lot of barriers. Maybe they train health workers who come into contact with these people. At least if we can know how to communicate, service center will be easier. To us and to them, they will receive the best, and we shall understand each other. Sometimes we try to give the best, but due to miscommunication, some people are checking the call. Alex, Lawoko, what's up? What way does the report to you forwarding it? I think it will make a difference. Charles Kojo, a deaf brilliant young man. Currently working with the Uganda Center for Sign Language Bible Translation Network, until now feels is not satisfied with the suggested solution in the told stories. He says an app should be developed and launched that contains a number of signs and gestures, as shown below. He feels that this will actually bridge the gap between the deaf and the hearing people, 
in terms of communication. According to his research, he says that this will actually reduce on the increasing rate of maternal deaths that occur in the deaf community due to the barriers in communication. There are four calls upon the government of Uganda, Can I also have the non-government organization, and any other interested stakeholders to take part in the building of this yeah, government. Government. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think that is very informative, and um, I don't know what you, you felt, uh, Sister Dorothy Agilon, yes. uh, but it raises a number of issues, is even if we are looking at the deaf now. But uh, I think generally, in as far as differently abled mothers are concerned, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get your feedback, uh, but for now, Judith is joining us. And uh, I would like to, to hear from Judith because, as explained earlier, she also just complained about, um, she wrote an article that was complaining about the way differently, oh, just expectant mothers are handled in public spaces. How about how they are handled in, actually, health facilities? Uh, Judith, are you there? Are you online? We are also trying to have Alex, join us all the way from Gulu. Um, I think we saw Charles. Charles works for the same organization where um, Alex is the executive director. So little wonder that he actually did, uh, was the one who he trained with us as a filmmaker so that they could capture the voices of differently abled people, particularly the deaf, and use uh, the language the audiovisual language of cinema to be able to communicate the deaf people's perspectives. And um, apart from, from that, that Alex did a report, report, but he's having trouble connecting with us all the way from Gulu. So as he joins us, we will go to Judith. Hello, Judith. Morning, lovely to have you. and share the screen. of people. Hello. Hello. Um, as the technical team is working out a way to share Judith's screen, and uh, we would like to have Judith back, 
And as they are bringing Judith back, I would like to come to you, Sister Ajilong. Yes. Yeah, so when, when, when they say that health facilities have challenges dealing with uh, differently abled people, what does that mean, for instance, for Kawala? Are there any arrangements for handling different, differently abled people? Thank you very much, Sarah. First and foremost, I will request that you allow me to, to thank you so much for inviting me here. I would like to, to say thank you to the, to the team, the media team. And then uh, I want to say that once mom from Kawala Health Center 4 and Kawala is very committed to serve any type of clients and even very passionate to see that we are able to reach to the, to the, the, the different the, to the able the what? mothers. So we are well positioned to receive the mothers. And uh, I want to say, before I say more, I want to thank our stakeholders, Minister of Health, I want to thank the Directorate of Public uh, KCCA, I want to thank the partners, USID, Save the Children, the GIZ, that continuously supports us, monitors us for the, for the care in line with the disabled uh, mothers. And we are not only looking at those mothers, but also looking at all the general mothers and uniquely looking into specific issues that we should do beyond the basics for the, dis the disabled mothers. Um, I want to say that uh, in Kawala, averagely, I think we get about five mothers with such uh, unique challenges. We are trained always to manage, regardless of the situation. And maybe there would be some challenges, of course, in the care, in the in our care. But we normally receive them like any other mother. But what is very important with us there is one as Kawala, we are very conscious about uh, accessibility of these mothers. How are these mothers going to access the facility? That's one of the questions we ask ourselves. And then, when this mother comes to the facility. Do we have the supplies available for a mother that really labored to come from her home to the facility? So issues of availability come in. And then acceptability. I think that's where the challenge comes now. Because one, when, when we talk of acceptability, are we able now to talk to this mother? For instance, I've just watched a video about the deaf, and that's a unique case. Are we able to talk? sell our service to the patient, to the mother, and she's able to accept the service. Are you? Because, uh, we are. We Do you are. have trained uh, uh, health providers like midwives who, who can communicate in with sign language? We have very few, but at least we have two. At Kawala? Yes. Oh, that's one, impressive. I'm blessed to tell you that we have one of the doctors called Dr. Drapaga Kizito, and then one, one, we have one of the social uh, uh, community coordinators that is attached to teenage. So those are the people with whom we always consult whenever we get these unique cases. Mm. So we are positioned well to receive them. Just like I was telling you that when look at the uh, issues of accessibility, I run very fast and say, oh, if this mother has accessed the inside, is she able to access all their care points? That's one of the things we think about. Mm. And then we want to know that, do we have the toilets, specific toilets? For instance, for a mother who is on a wheelchair, is she able also to go to the place of laws? So is she able to? Yes, we are. So how are these toilets and how different are they from? They are slightly different, different and unique in a way that, one, you must have a dump that accesses that that client inside with a wheelchair. So it must be wide enough and there should be a walkway, a ramp that takes that person into that area. And not only that, but also to any other access point that we may link her. Like? Like maybe if we want to link her from, let's say even now directly to labor suit mm. or to the ward, is she able to enter? 
So all those access ways have been provided. We have ramps, we have those special toilets, we have a delivery bed. And I want to say thank you, thank you so much to the ministry once more for sending us the partners, sending us the people who support us. And recently we received even a new delivery bed through USID. So we want to say thank you. And it is one area, by the way, I want to tell you, sir, and the team that is listening, that KCC as an authority, and especially now um, public health, directorate of public health, is very, very passionate about mothers with disability. You'll excuse me to continue using that no, I had until we get to use it. Yes. So we're used to saying persons with a disability, but we shall change. <laughs> so we are very prepared. Um, when do you get the like the beds? Did Kawala, for instance, three, four years ago, was Kawala in position to handle differently about no, mothers? I don't want to lie, you know, we were not. Okay. But with the continuous monitoring and support and this kind of sensitization, we have prepared ourselves to receive. So, when did you receive these facilities? Uh, we received them about six months ago, but even wow. before that, we had. Before that, you had one. Uh, we had wheelchairs, we had our toilets prepared, and generally, even in the bed, we are able to, to manage them even with some of the beds that we have there. The team is well trained to receive any type of. Wow, this is little wonder that actually Kawala Health Facility now has been rated as the best in the country. I think later at a certain point we will have to come in and establish how the situation was before actually they got these facilities. Some of them six months ago and as she admitted or shared with us about three, four, five years ago they didn't have it. How was the situation? How many other health facilities in the country do have that kind of infrastructure? What does it mean for people who do not have the infrastructure? And if we get the opportunity to sort out the, uh, the network challenges that Alex is experiencing, we'll hear from him because he conducted a study country about how differently abled mothers, the challenges they experience, and the challenges health practitioners, providers experience when they have to help these mothers deliver. But right now, I'd like to go back to Judith. Judith, can we come to you? Are you yes. Uh, okay. Uh, as they are setting Judith, Judith, I'm sorry for the experience we for the technical challenges sharing the screen with you. Can we go to Vicent? Vicent, what's the situation in other health facilities? What has your investigation as a journalist established as far as differently abled mothers and the challenges they experience in health facilities? Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Sarah, and uh, big thanks to the Kawala in charge. Okay. Um, for my own point of view, and as for my own uh, studies conducted across different health centers, um, for, for a number of health centers in Kampala, uh, like to talk. Just, we can't, we have one hour. These are not well positioned mm -hmm. at all to handle mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mothers. And I would like to note with concern that the award given to Kawala may But it, can the screen be shared? Can we go back to her? And I'm going to cut this setting. You are not. But when you look at other health facilities, I can give you an example of uh, uh, Mulago. You will find yourself going to Mulago and you fail to get any help out of this. Usually, you have people like uh, the signage interpreters, and the same would apply to Kawempe. For Kawala, I've not been there to, 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 to verify the validity, but I know. Uh, the sister is well positioned and substantial in her submissions, but also my concern would be uh, uh, about months ago when I was talking to sister in an interview, she said they have an issue of uh, operating Kawala of the center four at the budget of an of the center three. What my concern would be, how are they pushing on to ensure that at least in the budget of the Center 3 allocated to the Center 4 is inclusive of these differently abled people? And then, away from that, uh, much as we are talking about uh, handling differently abled mothers, but we, we were much aware that 
Respective maternity care also includes uh, the newborn. I would like to know maybe from the in charge, um, are there avenues of at least having uh, full time counselors to take these mothers through? through the, the way they can embrace. You know, when you, uh, when you have a delivery of uh, a differently abled baby, then the trauma to the mother, how is it handled? Are they well positioned to counsel these mothers and at least have insect them in, in their minds that at least these kids are also human like us? How effective are they embrace? And still, do they involve in fathers? Because at some point we see fathers are either incapable of um, of looking after these differently about babies, but some deliberately ignore. Do we have uh, inclusivity of fathers in these pro counseling programs to see that at least also fathers take up the responsibilities other than maybe neglecting and leaving it away to, to the mothers? Thank you very much, uh, Vincent. I'd like to you to keep the other questions because are very important issues you raise here, and I would like Sister to actually address and respond to them. Okay. Mm. Uh, thank you so much, Vincent. Uh, I, I want to assure, assure the media and the listeners that uh, yes, we we may not be really trained in that with that that in that area of sign language. But our training really prepares us for all conditions, all situations that happen. And I want to say that you have touched the area of male involvement. It is one of the priority areas. And it is one of the innovations that we are trying here and there to see that we bring the men closer. And I want to proudly tell you that today we are able to get mothers, I mean fathers, who come to escort their mothers to their, their mm. wives to the facility. Mm. And uh, the numbers increased. It has gradually increased. The men uh, come, they attend antenatal. We also try to give them attention and extra attention. How do you and do that? reduce their waiting time. Oh. Because we know that if the two, the two breadwinners are all here waiting, what happens to the family? Mm. So when we see the two couple, the couple coming, we normally emphasize that the midwives should take keen attention to see that they clear the, the couple very fast. Now looking at a labor suit, we allow the men inside, especially if the mother so wishes. Yes, the, the space is limited. We're working at their, their limited space, mm. but if it is free, because I have three, we have three beds in the labor suit. So, but we, 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 we provided some privacy. We have the curtains in between that acts as cubicles. So, if one cubicle is, for instance, at the entrance, why not allow this father to take care? Okay. And if he's the only uh, attendant there, he must come and even continue supporting us with the things we need mm -hmm. and also to witness the child and keep talking to the mother. Mm. And I want to tell you, it is very interesting. The mothers even themselves respect their men when they are inside. Mm. And they feel good. Mm. So regarding counseling, yes. Because as soon as the baby is born, we are supposed to examine these babies. And then when we examine, if anything is detected, like an abnormality, it is a very key issue that should be addressed even right from the labor suit before this mother leaves to the, to the bed. And so the couple is prepared. We start with the mother herself. We tell you to appreciate what we have just seen, the baby we have just delivered. So when we give you, we show you how the baby is. If there is anything we show them later on, after we have prepared them, then we follow them to their beds and talk to them depending on the type of abnormality. Okay. So we are very prepared. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. are there people specifically trained, because Vincent wanted to establish if there are people who are specifically trained to deal with the issues of if the mothers have, uh, if the newly borns have abnormalities, or that is like the preparation as you generally... For us, we are all trained. We are all trained. It's part of the training. Mm. So right from the training school, mm. and then with other refresher trainings, and then the sensitization, we are all taken through. And so 
regardless of who is on duty, who is receiving the case, yeah. we must be able to comprehensively manage the situation. Yeah, I think you also raised uh, the question of budget in, in, a, in terms of health center, 300 yes. health center. For my recollection is that there are plans to make Kawala a health center for, but not yet health center. No, for. we are already health center for. Oh, really? Congratulations. Yes, when did you become health center that for? That was uh, 2018 October. Wow. <laughs> the only thing that uh, my friend Vincent is quoting is yes. we continue to say fine, we we work actually it was on newspaper. It's the budget for health center for that. It you is what we are still pushing on and it is it is in the process. Hmm. So very soon the areas will be revised. However, there's something specific like I said, we try to go beyond basic. We do a lot of lobbying. KCC does a lot of lobbying. The Ministry of Health knows what it is going on. They go into data. They appreciate what we are producing. And they are able to send us partners. They are able to send us people who try to give us what? To give us buffer, buffer stocks. Mm. And I want to tell you that we even have projects like CEDA. Actually, I, I should have mentioned CEDA first because one of the funds that has made us to shine as Kawala was the direct funds that we're getting through a result-based financing uh, project. And that money had empowered the health workers, the management, to prioritize, to keep prioritizing the needs at the grassroots. And that really has helped us to come up with a lot of gaps and address them. Without wanting to be diverted from the topic of differently abled mothers, I would like in one minute to tell us how the prioritizing was done. Do you go to communities? Uh, the, health, the, the fund helped the health practitioners become better providers, more motivated. What happens with that fund? All the supplies were better, all the infrastructure. So the way the funding was done, they call it output-based funding. So it is out of the performance that we have done. We, we compile our performance report and submit to the project. So once we submit, they are able to give us support depending on that. And then there was a very good tool that was very comprehensive that would cover all of the modules. It would cover the, the finance area, it would cover the leadership, human resource, medicines and supplies, laboratory tech. So there were so many things that would be covered. And then it looks at the, the, the customer satisfaction, it would look at the community aspect, are they able to receive feedback, are we able to get their feedback. So it was a very comprehensive tool that really opened our eyes and it was us now to sit down and say, oh, where is the problem? Where is the gap? What can we prioritize? And this is where we are and this is how we reach to this. Thank you very much, very, thank you very much, very uh, interesting re revelations and we are very, uh, have been educated a lot and will be privileged for the opportunity to come and capture some of the developments at Kawala. For now I think we'd like to go to Judith and uh, Judith, are you set? Hello Judith, sorry for the earlier technicalities. Uh, please uh, go ahead and continue where we left off from. But you're welcome to also respond to the submissions of Vincent and uh, Sister Dorothy Ajilong. Judith? <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Judith. Uh, sorry for the technicalities. Thank you for braving it and, and talking to us. Also, thank you for following up and bringing a, a, a very interesting angle because we are looking at health facilities, but also the public spaces and the reaction of uh, pro service providers in the public arena. Uh, for instance, what you've just shared that you experienced with Hubbard. Uh, I, I would also like to say that you said 15% of the people globally are disabled. In Uganda, we have about 12.4 percent of our population. That's about 4.5 million. 4.5 million people in your community, if they are disabled or differently able, then that's not something that you can look at differently. And I would like to come back to you as the programs manager, White Ribbon Alliance. I know that you are saying that um, no mother should lose a life while bringing a life to this world. But also some of the, the challenges are the circumstances, the infrastructure, the supplies, the capabilities of health providers. Can you share with us if that, that is an area you have been looking at and what you have been able to do, or the, the situational analysis of how in your take as White Ribbon Alliance, uh, differently abled mothers are handled in health facilities in Uganda? Judy? To get the question, we can hear you. Well, have you? Do you have a sense of a, a situational analysis as White Ribbon Alliance or as a midwife yourself? How actually the status of health providers, the challenges they experience? and how equipped or positioned they are to handle in health facilities and what is the take and position of White Ribbon Alliance when it comes to differently abled mothers in health facilities. to be experiencing technical challenges and as we we sort that out thank you judith we would still be interested in establishing the 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 study that was conducted in kamuli iganga ginger kampala and masindi uh the issue of uh 
differently abled mothers and we could we will also encourage you Judith to type in the chat room and probably we can read to people and they can also read where we are having challenges so please uh, welcome to do that as we try to see how the network can be sorted but I'd like to come back to Vincent um, you had what um, uh, Judith said in, in line with um, differently abled people and how they are handled in public spaces is it are they obliged what's the situation I, I wouldn't like it to get us away from differently abled mothers and respectful maternity care but don't communities have a role to play especially the people who are who are actually assets or custodians of public spaces that we use well, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, like your question was, our communities have a, having a role to play. Yes, they are. Uh, this starts uh, inclusivity of uh, service delivery uh, to differently abled, but to be specific, differently abled mothers uh, has to be a collective effort among us, us community uh, people. It starts with us in, at a video level, but also at uh, policy making levels, uh, the leadership levels, and advocacy. Uh, when you look at communities, at some point, communities tend to lie so reluctantly on uh, issues to do, to do with inclusivity. Uh, for example, if you can uh, take time and uh, walk through all uh, LC1 offices where we seem to say that uh, this has to start at the village and ground level, you will find that these offices are not having spaces uh, for the, the most common and the most easy one are these grants to have easy access to the lame people. Yes, uh, when it comes to the differently abled who are deaf and dumb, uh, this idea that like, it has to to be a national concern with the policy makers. Uh, when you look at the different airports that are damp and deaf, uh, those having uh, ADs are either paid by these advocacy groups, these civil society organizations, or these people pay them themselves. But what happens then to someone who, who comes from a poor economical background who cannot afford to hire? someone to help them uh, access services. This, I would think, goes back to the policy makers to at least uh, build up an, uh, an education sector that promotes inclusivity. Let's have uh, education more prioritized to people to, to help them, but also in the national budgets and uh, the national policy implementation. Can we also have funds allocated to a deeds of these people. Because you cannot ascertain what is of economic status to either acquire and pay this person. But it's a matter of national importance. We tend to waste so much funds in things that can easily wait. But can we at least have prioritization of these people? Because we've seen a number of them coming up and actually perform much better in service delivery than uh, us who are not differently abled. Have made some consultants in these advocacy groups, but they are dumb and deaf. So if we have this inclusivity, can we also have prioritization of having midwives that are also differently abled, at least to draw a quick uh, example when you look at uh, the schools we have, when someone comes up and says, I'm going to take up a science course, let's say a nursing course, these are the very people now, the educationists who come and condemn these people not to go in for them, but rather push them into arts. But if we have them prioritized, this differently abled person will look after this mother as her very old. Yes, we understand we are professionals in the health sector, we are trained to handle them very well, but at some point, bias cannot be driven out. But if we have them also have their own, then at least we have a better way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vincent. Vincent also raises the issue of um, 
the support structures. But uh, last, in the previous two weeks, we, we got uh, guests and we are looking at budgeting and the strains, for instance, the public and Uganda is having as far as supporting mothers in health facilities. Something you alluded to where mothers come expecting free services in health facilities, but then the health facilities are not there. So when he talks about providing money to now the aids, why is that money going to come from? Shouldn't people come with the responsibility? Who bears that? How do we hit a balance? Uh, do you think that is a balance we can hit? Is it the responsibility of government to pay people who should support a mother and aid supporting a mother? Can, can our country afford that? Should we plan for it? Sister, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you, Sarah. I want to say that uh, this is, to some extent, is beyond us as Kawala, but it goes back to the government, and I'm sure uh, there must be stakeholders who are really listening to our discussion, and uh, this kind of sensitization makes us to widen our thinking. And uh, me personally, I have taken note of that. I, my easiest area is now the area of budget. I, I must always be very conscious to see that in the budget in line with this, these people who are differently abled is catered. But I'm also proud to say that I've been catering for them anyway, because I, I almost, I'm almost done. We only just remain with a few remodeling of some corners to finish up the walkways. Otherwise, in line with the budget, we shall just continue to maintain. Mm. But uh, regarding what he has raised, it goes back to the government and to my father ministry, so that we are able to take priority in this area. I think this is something we, we may need to, to raise with the, with the ministry. Uh, Dr. Mugahi, uh, who is the assistant commissioner, uh, family and Reproductive Health, I yes, think. Yes. Uh, he's usually a guest on this show, and this is something we'd like to, to follow up with him. But back to you on the issue of also transportation. It's a, a limiting factor, and outreach, community outreaches. So I'd like to start from the issue of transport, because many mothers have challenges coming to a hospital. It's a different case, getting to a, host, to a health facility, and you have supplies, but then, in the community where you, you are connecting to health facilities, how are, are differently abled mothers catered for? Are there plans? Are there plans to handle them? One, we have uh, the lowest facility level, that is the VHTs, the village health teams, that we have in each of our catchment areas. And I want to tell you, we as Kawal also, we have a very strong team in that area. So we normally work together with them. They are the people who know their people. And then also at the division level, we are in touch with the CDOs, people who know these people where they are. So sometimes me personally, I've ever got calls for two clients, and then I was able to see how to, to support them until they came. So how and did you support them? Actually, I- What support did they need? I actually it was accessing a service. I, I wouldn't mention, but, <laughs> confidentiality would be there yeah. but we the, the client needed help that time of COVID we needed help in the area of HIV yeah. so we just attached a, a counselor and got the refills of drugs and delivered directly to the to the client and that was very easy yeah. just because we were contacted but then for those who we cannot know where they are I think we needed to strengthen the VHTs we need to strengthen the, the CDOC office to get for us these people. And for us nowadays, we have open discussions. So we keep giving our numbers and say, please feel free. It is an open door. You call us anytime and we see if we can reach you. Mm. If we cannot, mm. if it is labor, for instance, I want to tell you if we are latted early and this person is stranded somewhere, we have the ambulance. We can easily talk to our call center and then we go and pick the client. So we are trying to see how best we can go lower. Actually, sir, I want to inform the listeners that 
the kind of service now we need to give and we are giving, for instance, us at Kawana, we are trying to be down on earth. We are no longer the other health workers you heard about. <laughs> we are not the health workers who are looking for our clients. We want to understand where they are and we want to try to be as simple as possible with a very simple way. Oh, that's thank you, and that's great work. But when you find out, because uh, my recollection also when we had a conversation at Lubaga was also the challenge of the mother-patient ratio yes. and uh, sometimes being really overwhelmed, yes. especially with cases of people coming from neighboring communities and coming to Kampala and Kawala being one of those health facilities. How, where do you get the time to go to the mothers when you are already clearly overwhelmed with the numbers? The good thing, it is a one-off. It is a one-off. But once we are contacted, Sarah, we cannot fail to reach there. We cannot fail to get an alternative. But uh, you have touched the area of uh, inadequate staffing. It is a very big challenge. I want to tell you, if I just read for you a small data concerning the maternity care, the, the small data that we compiled for a few financial years, you would see a very steady or rapid increment of clients attending at the facility. Mm. And when you look at the structure of Ministry of Health, for instance, Health Service Commission, when the structure is passed, maybe they can pass like three years back, basing on the population that was there. But because of this sharp increase, in most cases, we are not able to serve our clients because of the, the demand. The demand becomes high, and the, the health workers are strained. And we are even strained to an extent of going past some shifts, long hours of working, because you want to see that we are able to complete all the shifts. Doesn't that affect the quality? It does it. No, no, no. Yeah. We cannot compromise. However, to some small extent, of course, because if I delay to reach you when you are really crying and calling, Musawa, Musawa, and I'm still attending to this person, the other person has gone to theater, the other person has taken a referral, mm. then you know that I will have delayed a bit. Now that you're a health center for, how many health providers do you have? We as Kawala, we have 72 established government, but that shouldn't excite you mm. because when you look at the data, because if I take you very fast with the little data that I collected here, I would tell you that um, in, it, in the financial year 2019-2020, um, one, our population currently is 122,300. 122,300. That's the population we're looking at. And like for the women, on a daily or now? That is in a financial year. Oh, 122,300. Oh my God. Oh, 122,300. Yes, yes. Okay. And for women, total women attending, in 2019 2020, we're looking at 13,482. 2020. Those are mothers, mothers, women. mothers, women the that living? attended. Okay. That we received at the facility. Okay. We received at the yes. facility. Mm. In 2020-2021, we received 31,115. Remember, we started from 13. Mm. Now we are to 31,115. Now, in 2021-2022, which was the last financial year, we received 356. So we expect even to go to 40 by this financial year. So are you seeing the steady increase? So this means a lot. It really means a lot to us. Yeah, because what's the implication on the patient doctor ratio now? That How do you is, rate it? That is, so when I tell you of 72, that is just a part of the maternity, one department. Now, how about other departments? So, so does the maternity have, okay, the people you're talking about, the 35 now, going yes. to 40, mm -hmm. are, are the people you handle annually, Yes. Uh, and you have 72 health providers, yes. and those 72 health providers, how many are in the maternity ward? For the maternity, like maternity in particular, we have only 12 12 midwives. Remember, this, this midwife must also become a mother. Oh my God. The midwife must be, have a, become a mother and have a heart rate of how many months?
The very midwife should have the right to maintain to annual leave. The very midwife can follow sick. The very midwife should go for a refresher training. So having the toilet still becomes a challenge to run. On a so daily, on how a many? Daily, moreover, there are three shifts divided. Mm. We have the, the day duty that starts from morning up to five, eight to five. Then the other midwives take from around two to eight. Then the other one will start from eight to eight in the morning. In the morning. So you see how it becomes challenging to, to, to allocate these people. But all the same, like I've told you, we go into longer hours. It's a commitment to some extent. I, I actually, ideally, we're supposed to work for those eight hours. But you find some of them working for 12 hours. Because you have to prolong slightly so that you are able to support the people inside before you leave. This is why we must have these conversations going. As we also, there is a, a complaint in communities and mothers saying that they are not well handled in health facilities. But you have a mother, a, a midwife, who has been working for over eight hours, probably 12 hours, chances of not getting their leave are also high. And then they have to handle more than one mother. How many mothers do you handle in a day? Delivery specifically, yes. we, we get like 30 mothers. A day? 20, yeah, 25 to 30. So with three beds, meaning each mother has, each bed is going to be used by 10 mothers, right? By 10 mothers. And we have 12 midwives, but at a single time, at a single... Two to so we have two to three, meaning that if there are ten, each midwife has to handle three mothers on ten beds. And the, the three, three midwives only apply for day duty, because day duty becomes an, a busy day. You have to go for drugs, you have to do this, you have to chat this. So then when it comes to night, we only have two, two midwives. What would be the, the reasonable number of that would work in a health facility such as Kawala, like Center 4? Center 4. If each midwife would attend to at least maybe we can say minimum of four mothers, four to five, I think... A day? Is that a day? day? Yes, because yeah. when you look at our technicality, the way we are supposed to monitor these women, my dear, my dear. When it comes to what we call a pathograph, a pathograph is a tool that demands you to monitor the woman closely after every 15 or 30 minutes. Are you able to do that? We are not able, but we are able to innovate and do something and make sure you are in touch with the mother continuously. So that's However, innovation. Is yes, how, how does it work? With the photograph, there is even no negotiation about that. Mm. You must monitor her as it is. So our experience sometimes saves us. I may prolong by one hour mm. or one and a half, like I told you, I could be delivering the other side. I could be maybe taking the mother to theater, but making sure that I have to come and listen to this baby, have to come and see how the contractions are, so you keep in touch. So that is where we feel we are strained if we are not enough. If the numbers are relatively good, then this quality service can really be handled. Is it a lack of numbers? Is it the affordability? Do we have enough, for instance, healthcare providers if their services were, if their funds were available? Do you think we would have enough? Um, if the funds were there, but okay, the little that we got, like I told you, some partners have been supporting, we have been able to add on some few personnel, Are you... especially in the area of the doctors, the critical area of the anaesthetists, to see that we are able to complete a 24-hour service. And I am proudly talking and telling the community that we are waiting for the clients. The only limitation that you make up and say, oh, what happened, sister, is the, the area of space. Our space is not enough, but as I speak now, we are fully prepared for, to run 24-hour service from the labor suit from up to the theater. 24 7 means we are here from morning 8 to 8. 
congratulations. I can see Vincent is wild. Uh, but before I come to you, Vincent, I, I, I'd like to congratulate you again. I think um, we've been saying what, uh, I know that White Ribbon Alliance conducted a study where they were saying, what do mothers want? I think what do our health providers want is also critical. And hearing from you is, is very important. I think these voices have to keep going out, celebrating people who are doing this amazing work. I'm very humbled. It's very easy to criticize. But there was a hand. Moses Mutaka had, I think, a comment or a question. Moses, are you online? Moses, go ahead. I think we've lost Moses. Uh, I'd like to come back to Vincent and as we, we try to recontact Moses. Yeah. Interesting that you raised that visit. I, I remember, I think last week on Friday, we was it last week that one at Potea Hotel, and one of the members of parliament, well, who was that? I think it was, uh, um, it's, it wasn't Josephine, but someone said, midwives need to deliver. Yeah? Okay, that was Honorable Christine Nduwalana, and she was saying that part of the challenge is that midwives want to deliver, and I, I may not be able to use the language she, she used, but she said that there doesn't seem to be the people to to contribute to that process and part of that could be what Vincent has just described. I think it does not deal with the subject of different abled mothers but it deals with how these health providers will deal with differently abled mothers and any mother if they are not able to themselves deliver or have a life outside what are health facilities doing because you, you are agreeing with him you just hinted at that how are you dealing with that challenge no i want to assure Vincent that we are we are actively producing <laughs> <laughs> maybe there could be some loopholes to the family that one is more confidential but uh, we try, we try to balance, we keep trying. Mm. But we are very active in the producing. But how does... As I speak, I have someone in my tent to leave. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so what are some of the initiative you institute yeah, or motivation for these ladies to be understood by their partners, husbands or whatever? Because it also includes dating, finding people to date you, finding time to, 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 to have adult conversations and all that? No, but uh, in our culture of medicine, um, we, we, good enough, we have uh, time to rest. For instance, if I worked for two days, I'm supposed to work eight hours in a day, or like the third of our chronified strain, but I, we shall compensate for the days worked. So if you worked for two days, then you can be given a conversation of more two days. So I mean, if I'm given these two days to rest, mm. yes, then I'm also able to get to the world out there. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. I, I have seen that uh, Alex has uh, been able to share his report. He's still experiencing uh, challenges with the network and for adding it to, to the technical team so that we can peruse through 
the report and they are saying justice. His report is titled Justice for People with Disabilities. Uh, but before we go to that, do we still have Moses? Is Moses back online? Moses, can you go ahead with your question or comments? Be. I think Moses might be still experiencing challenges. Uh, I see Sengoba, Nathan, I see your hand, your hand is up. Uh, kindly come with your question or comment as we rectify the challenges with Moses Mutaka. Nathan? Technology. As uh, we wait to hear from Moses. Yes, please. Uh, my brother Moses, thank you. No, that, that's Nathan Sengoba from Kamuli. Oh, Nathan. Mm. Uh, Nathan, I don't want to say no. There is actually a very big gap that we are trying to address. This gap has just not started today, but it has been ongoing. But I want to say that uh, my brother. Yes, that was actually even up to now those things happen. I don't want to say that they are not happening. They do happen. But today a few a few of us think we must go beyond slightly. We must must make a difference in our service. And when I tell you now, I want to assure you if you want to trust us, trust and send those clients to us. If you send it to my place, for instance. Me who has understood that I can contribute to change. Change is something that is gradual. But a few of us feel we should reach to that change. We should make some sense in it. So I don't want to refuse it. I know it happens. But we want to continue encouraging the mothers that we need you. You are the cause for our employment. Mm. We need you and you need us. Please test us. This sensitization does not stop here, but I'm sure whoever is listening now cannot remain the same. But a few of us are trying to make change. KCCF facilities are trying. I want to say we are trying to improve on service communication. We are trying to make relationships, though we are not yet there at 100%. But we are somewhere 60 to 70, 60 to 70 I can say. Congratulations. Yeah, of course, um, of course, the, the gap for the 30%, we also need to bring it in, but we also have to look where we are coming from, and I think it's commendable efforts. I hope this is not only Kawala. I hope it's also other health facilities. Are you able to share the situation in other health facilities? I'm sure you're able, no, not to blame them, but 
probably the experiences they could, the challenges they could be experiencing, because if it's the base and it's only about two, three years ago and six months that he's been equipped, what's the state of affairs elsewhere? Okay, I, I can share about the KCCA sister facilities. I want to say, we as the KCCA will not talk here, but if you want, you can even come and keep. You can, you journalists, you're good at coming quietly. You can come and try to see what we are doing there. KCCA is really committed. The way we are trying to, to handle our clients, we want to make a difference. And if we were not doing that, if it was not improving greatly, then we would be telling you of these big numbers. Mm. We get very big numbers. That means this, there is some change in the service delivery. Mm. So, so, for the rest of the cases of us, it is, I'm sure, our services don't differ. And I want to inform you that, as I'm seated here, for us, we are rated, we are uh, evaluated on a monthly basis. There is a project that is called the SEMA. SEMA looks into the feedback of clients. We don't corrupt anyone. We don't tell them anything. But what they have done is to place the machines at every entry point. So that machine is directed to the client at the point of exit. So even if we delayed it to pass our uh, survey form, we are able to get their feedback through those machines. And normally it's like a competitive thing with the KCCA. It's like this facility thinks they should over come the other. So I, again, I want to tell you in the house that just last month, just last month, July, we managed it to be the best out of the eight one. But it's sustaining it is quite difficult because <laughs> this time, this month, you are number one. Another month, you go to three, you go to two, you yeah. come to four. But at least I want to thank God that we have always been in three to. Wow. One, one to three. Congratulations. A lot because sustaining is not easy. Uh, looking at the crowds that we get, you don't really think that you'd even get such a good mm, feed response. So, so my question is, we are talking about Kiseni, uh, Chiteri, Kawala, uh, what are the other eight facilities? We are talking about Kiseni being the biggest facility, then followed by Kawala, then we come to Kitebi Health Facility 3, we have Kisugu Health Facility 3, we have Kiswa, uh, we have Komamboga, we have Bokoto, and then uh, we have City Hall. How are, how, the center place. How, are they, how can they compare Health Center 3 to Health Center for yet you don't have uh, similar infrastructure? Are they looking at the services now and treatment of people vis-a-vis -vis availability of supplies and, and services? They are looking, actually, they are looking at the, the, the services. They look clearly into the area of services. And then the, the waiting time. One of the things that I can share with you is most people don't like public facilities because of the long waiting time. So it is one area that we are trying to see how basic can we reduce. If you came to a, a, a department like HIV clinic, it would take you like one hour to complete all the processes required there. But uh, we are saying that one hour is also a lot. Actually, it would be like two hours. But now we are trying to do everything timely at a timely manner. Well, and that, that affect the, the, the time given to uh, a person, because also Part of recovery is mental, is, is the mind and how you deal with the mind. No, it doesn't. We do the really thing, but trying to be mindful of the wasted time. Eh? When this person goes to the lab, was the lab person available? If this person went to lab and came back to the clinician, was the clinician available at the right time? So we don't want to leave gaps like, I'm coming back from lab, I come and sit and sit and there's no one inside. Oh, there are some interruptions of people moving up and down, wasting time instead of caring for the, mm. for the client. Mm. So that is one of the areas. Then uh, we, they are not looking at volumes, but service delivery. And then the interaction you had with the client. This machine, this project, even breaks into our interaction, me and the client. How? It, in a way that they can give us feedback and say, in the department X, the officer there did not attend to me at the right way. The officer 
looked not to be professional. The officer was rude. We get in that summer day. So the mothers that you get, what is their potential to deal or answer those questions? In what language? Uh, for people who can't write, how are they able to respond? For put instance, in, put in a Luganda, Luganda in English for now the common language. If then we, we have. But it's a machine, and our people have issues have when written, it comes to machine. Written, and then sometimes those people are even there to to interpret. Hey. Uh, so are, are, are the people scared of the interpreters? Not the, are they health providers? For those who can read, most times those who read, they, they go and press, they know the corner where the machine is. Mm. Yeah. And then when we have also, when we have the, the dialogues with the community, the stakeholders, the LOCs, the, the, the chairpersons, we get those feedbacks, we have dialogues and receive and come to continuous address. So how do you do these uh, community outreaches? What is the motive? How do you choose the communities you go to? Who funds and supports that? Different stakeholders fund it. One of them is USID. Some we have also our own budgeted uh, outreaches that we plan for. But the majority comes from the implementing partners. So like I told you, we are in touch with the community and those are the VHTs. So the VHTs, the other stakeholders, come and complain, come and tell us. But sister, you have been sending outreaches to the other side. You have never sent it to Nakulabi. And Nakulabi has the hard to reach area. When are you going there? So when you have opportunities for outreaches, then you are in a position to prioritize the, the underserved areas. Mm. Yeah. Well, good work. I would like to run back to Moses Mutaka. I think the issues were rectified. I don't know whether I answered it. No, you, I, I, I think you've answered, unless someone has uh, something that they feel is not answered. And you're welcome. We welcome the people online, both on YouTube and actually on Zoom to share with us your questions, your comments, your experiences, and we'll read out those and, and, and be able to discuss or you get feedback from uh, the panelists here. I think we lost... We have issues of criticism report on a modern developer page 9, on page 42. Because these people 
running up and down to save a life and then at the end of the 12 hours you told you have to prolong for four hours because it's done so and so has got a minor issue to solve. Then that I think can be only solved by increasing staffing. That is the best way I think we can attain a responsive and dignified treatment of different medical matters. Oh, thank you very much. Sister, do you have something you want to... to uh, I, I want to respond to my brother Vincent that, uh, like I've said, work is to continuously... Actually, you cannot do without a challenge. And challenges are part of life, and it, it is one thing that strengthens us. But what is important is to keep identifying where you're not playing well, what is an obstacle here and there. So as the authority, for us we write reports to them, mm. and they are very aware, and I want to inform you that one of the things right now that is being handled is the issue of recruitment. Mm. So I am not so worried, they are really aware of these problems, and it, it, it is in the process. So. Very soon, I think an event can be run. It could be an internal, it could be external, but they are in the process of all, trying again to, to replace because there are two things here. It could be the increasing, the demand becoming more than the supply, or the replacement because we know that as time goes on, some of us need to exit and then others should come in. Mm. So the replacement is also something that they should consider to be regular. And I think that's what the authority is trying to handle. Some of the people who have retired, because before that, actually last year, two years, I've lost about five, six who have retired. So we are trying to see how to replace. Oh, so they, they haven't yet been replaced? They are already working into that. As you know, the policy, so, it is not something just do very fast, but it is almost in the final processes. So it, these 12 people, you're five less, or no, the 12 no, people no, is no, five no, years no, less, so, yeah, but so you would be having have, like 17? We would have that. Actually, midwives alone in the whole MCH have about 24, but out of the 24, they are in other departments. Mm. We have postnatal, we have immunization, we have postnatal for cesarean section, we have to put them in the theater, we have to put them, there are many nutrition, so every area, and for us, even the, um, the, 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 the ANC, the antenatal services, mm. are divided into two. We have the adults separated from the teenagers, mm. so that all calls for additional numbers. Mm. So you have to see how to balance. Oh, thank you very much. The other issue that I wanted to deal with is the medical supplies for the different uh, disabilities. So, uh, for instance, ep epileptic people and others, how, how equipped are you in terms of supplies to, to deal with the or are there spe special ones that you know that these ones on average we have and on average these are the kind of disabilities that come in. Like, are you positioned to deal with any disability and things like epileptic people and right now we are also having a challenge of mental health what capacity do you have to deal are, with that we are able to handle uh for the for those specific conditions the good thing they all fall into the same they are like any other person it is only a small small uniqueness Maybe like me, what I've picked here majorly is the issue of training more health workers to be well equipped. Because when myself at my level, I, I, apart from beckoning, come and buy and maybe I don't know, hmm. there are a few things that I know. Hmm. So it is one area generally, I know it cuts across. Hmm. This is something we should honor and I'm very sure our government is going to to take up that responsibility. Mm. The Minister of Health, whoever is now hearing, I'm sure they are going to do something. What are you saying? <laughs> and for me, I can even now start with my immediate partners mm. and say, please, if there are areas you can support us, then I first need my midwives trained and the doctors so that we start from there as we wait for other opportunities. Oh. So that the rest of the supplies, we really plan. They the epilepsy, we have the same drugs. Only that we may not have everything. But we, what we do, we we analyze this a kind of an analysis we do and make sure that what the essential 
essential drugs that are required that can rescue the situation if we fail them we refer to the next next level so we are able to hmm. position thank you i am very encouraged by your tech which is of training and uh, I'm happy that you're looking at, because I've also seen the issue of like the blind, uh, people with uh, visual impairments, and the challenges that they have in health facilities. But what uh, the report that Sebtran did, that Alex just shared, and I hope the technical team will take us to page seven and page nine and other pages, but one of the things that the, the the differently abled communities are saying, especially their leaders, is that there is a gap between the, these organizations, entities that deal with differently abled people and the health providers and health facilities. How do you connect with these people? How do you incorporate them or work with them to eliminate some of the challenges that come out with the nature of their abilities? Now, when you mentioned about the blind, you said the blind? Yes, visually uh, impaired. Uh, maybe, I'd like for me, actually for that area, we may not be able to provide all the service. But we can, depending on what we receive, because for us in the medicine, we, we believe in the current, the, the, the presenting company. If you come, I, I, I meet you today, Sarah, and I'm like, how are you today, Sarah? So I am able to get you how you are today. Because I'm not going to look at that disability, I'm going to look at the current problem. It could be malaria, it could be diarrhea, that one I will handle. But maybe when it comes to those specific, specialized services, that's when we, we, we know where to send. We know where to send Mulago, we send it. So, so if someone is visually impaired, they go to Mulago? We they... refer. We receive you as per the presenting complaint. Mm. Then upon the history that I've taken from you, I will be able to make my decision and link you to the right, mm. right place. Because when I'm because hearing... At my level of four, I don't want to know you that we have all the specialized services. No. We have all grades. We know a great, what, a great, what a health center for can handle, what a host, general hospital should handle, what a regional and what a national hospital can do. Mm. But for us in the cases here, here, most of our cases we refer to either Chirudu or we refer to Kago and Kawempe. Mm. Yeah. So because what I was hearing from Vincent is that you seem, because of the partners that you have, to be more capable of handling some situations, especially when it comes to people with dis disabilities, than probably the hospitals? We would, but like I've told it depends on the, the current assessment you have done. If it is something that needs beyond your level, you must. You know the father is part of management. If I cannot, we have already been told, if you, at this point, then you push to the, to the next one. However, a few of the services could be added if the infrastructure was relatively good. Because if we have the infrastructure solved, because I remember that, I know that that Kawala Health Facility was planned maybe in 1998, and it had a certain number of population. Could be 100 clients. But today we are talking in a thousand. Mm -hmm. So there is no way this infrastructure can cater for all of these raising concerns. So the space at Kawala, is there room for expansion? We have been in discussion with the town clerk. We are in discussion with the mayor, Rubaga. Recently, even there is a task force that has been formed. They came and do, did assessment. We are even the off. Uh, and there was a representative from Buganda Kingdom. We think those discussions are still ongoing, trying to establish if there is room for expansion. But as far now, really, we don't see that room, but maybe issues of details of titles and what have you can be best addressed by the town clerk's office and maybe the mayor's office, of which we have done our part. We have submitted what we think 
and we are waiting for them to say, oh, there is a space here for, otherwise the services keep, could, could, there was an opportunity to continue increasing on service delivery to the population. Uh, I think, sister, I think your experience has taught you to sometimes know how to talk like politicians, because... <laughs> Because, sister, you have answered, but what I think, how I ended up getting it is that the space might not be available, but there is need for it, and the efforts are in uh, process. We are knocking in the respective offices, saying, yes. is there room? Because for us, we are me and the workers. We come and work, mm. and then we are not seeing a need for expansion. expansion. And we have run it, run it to them and say, is there a room for expansion? expansion? Otherwise, accessibility is very good. Utilization is very good, and that's a key mm. issue, a mm. key component in mm. what? In the, our service delivery. I see Vincent smiling. I think he wants to respond before I come in with my next comment. My, my concern is uh, to Sister Idero. Uh, you mentioned by your previous comment that your, your capability to handle different uh, I would like to, to know, I seem to know. When you look at the revenue and the kind of maternity beds you have in place, I don't know, uh, it's time to clarify, do you have some uh, maternity beds that at least uh, aid these people to help them access to easily because now you get a mother who is in a wheelchair who is holding uh, uh, AD, AD states. How can you have that? Uh, like I told you, that we recently received the and one of the specific beds we needed was the, 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 the delivery bed for the disabled, which I was told to tell you that the and then if you have the other beds for the, for the general wards, the, the duty is most of them are just the so by the time we get such a client, we should place position this patient in a bed where we are able to, to adjust. But of course at some point, for instance, if she was on a wheelchair, like any other person, she may not manage to climb, but that's our work. We try to support until we see, but at least the bed should be this bed that is adjustable. You are able to adjust and raise. So if I get such a client, I can lower it a bit, then we try to to support the, mm -hmm. support the client. But what was critical earlier on was having the delivery bed specific for the disabled mothers, which I'm happy now we have mm. acquired, we have got it. Okay, thank you very much. I think that answer and the question also brings me to the question of uh, culture. And in culture, before I go to, I, I would like to go immediately to the issue of positions of delivering yes. for the disabled mothers, but also mothers who might want to de deliver in different positions. Positions of preference. Yes, yeah. of preference. Yeah. And how is that handled? What's that one, I, I want to say that we have been sensitized again and again. And in our communication, interaction with the community, we would always hear, me when I, it's imagine the mothers want their positions of preference. And we say now, that is a right. It is a very good right for one's life. So if she comes and she wants the choice of that kind of specific position, we have to adjust. Do you have the infrastructure to do that? No, that's yeah. a need an infrastructure. Yeah. If at all she says I want to deliver from down here, what me I can do is to protect that environment. Mm. I can put my camera for delivery, I get ready with the team, and we see how to support it. But for the few cases, and even from the time I started practice, like even in Kawala here, we have so far gotten about four or five mothers. But most of them are very comfortable with, it, with our beds. We just support them, and we have never got one who's like, maybe they fear. I don't know whether they fear, and if really they want those specific positions, our people have been sensitized. We we are able to adjust. Are they given? You know the the, th we the things of course it and information. Are they guided on the rights that they have? Given how busy you are, is there time you know, for them to know their rights and the the choices they can make if they wish to? For us, 
you cannot compromise with the quality, you cannot compromise with the standards. We should be, in, with all our ability, able to pass the right message to the patient. Maybe the time we take, maybe to emphasize on something, but at least we should give information to these clients. But I don't want to say we are 100%. It may not be passed very well, but the, those listening to us, I'm urging, I'm requesting that we really don't deny these people from getting the right information. Especially like this area of uh, um, admission in the neighborhood. Most weaknesses we do as midwives. If you are busy, you can examine the mother, check what you know you should assess, and then you come and write, and you have not talked to the mother. And that is a very bad, bad disrespect. And that really pisses off our mother. Because like any other person, I would love to know that, hey, I, I, in the two hours time, I'll be able to, to deliver. But this midwife was not able to tell me, so they feel they were not respected. Eh? Should it be the midwife who is overwhelmed or you should have other support team like counselors and well, hospitality it is team? A, very, a health worker who has examined this patient, she should be the very person to pass the message because she's the one who examined. And so by, by passing it verbally, she will also come and pass it in the writing. So meaning that the next person taking over can benefit from this and maybe the oral report. Mm. But most cases people take it for granted and examine and say, yeah, well, maybe the next thing is where the problem is. Mm. Next, next patient. Eh? Mm. But we want to say that we shall continue to improve. Mm. Uh, it's something that uh, Dr. Murgahi is celebrating, and I had you celebrate the same thing, that the, the number of mothers coming has increased. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, for instance, explained that of the 1 million but 1,500,000 people mm -hmm. that we had. Cause for concern for the population, of course, but that's not the topic today. Mm -hmm. uh, one million of them uh, delivered with the aid of uh, a, a professional a health provider and in a health facility. I don't know if it is because the people are losing interest in traditional birth attendance, more information is available, all the services are improving in health facilities. The services are greatly improved in the health service sector. I don't want even to say that it is only like us, but there is a lot that has improved in service, in service delivery. And the, the, we are also trying, you know, this is a um, a rapidly changing uh, society. So we have also learned now to twist our brains very fast and try to meet the what? Mm. The, the demands of our clients. Mm. So we have greatly changed. Mm. Well, I don't know when you last had a midwife slapping a mother. Because those were the areas. That when the mother comes to deliver, the midwife was slapping, am I the one who pregnated you? <laughs> that was those days. That's why I was telling my brother that. We, you know, sometimes it becomes difficult to address the things. People will refer to the to the all the all the things, and they don't have the information of the current. Mm. But at least we, for sure, if I had it that my kid was loved a mother in a labor suit, that would be something different. Mm. But we have, we are changing. We are very far from there now. How does that speak to the kind of training? the health providers and midwives get at an institutional level, uh, not only in terms of respectful maternity care, and but also in terms of differently abled mothers. Do you think this is a conversation that should be taken to training institutions? Yes, because where are these midwives, where are the health workers are trained matters a lot. And one thing I'm, I'm seeing very soon that is going again to hit the, the health sector is the mushrooming uh, institutions, the training institutions. We want to, to appeal, we want to, to really request the councils to see how to, to see that they mount the, 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 the schools that they are giving licenses to run the schools. Because if we don't look into the component of training from the beginning, it is very difficult to, to change this person at, at, at the workplace. Yes. And it just comes back to the families. If someone is not raised very well, 
trust me, you will do very little. And if the character is not good, however knowledgeable you are, nobody will ever see your service. Hmm. I think what I'm hearing from Sister Dorothy Ajilong is that when we come and claim or criticize our health providers, have we also looked at the role we've played as communities and societies, as parents, as churches where these people go, as local leaders in the communities where they come from, as cultural leaders? What virtues are you giving your children who are tomorrow going to be the health providers or who are going to be in these spaces where health is provided? How will it catch up with you? I think that's what I'm hearing from Sister Ajilong. We are running out of time. It's been a wonderful audience but I would also like to come back to Sister Ajilong because disabilities are seen in different ways and cultural perspective for the patients but also for the for the health providers themselves are critical and one of the issues that is coming up is the issue of um, I've forgotten huh? uh, of albinos is that a disability should it be defined as a disability? How do we handle that? And how do you as health providers deal with that? Because they are said to be discriminated, even in health facilities, but also how they are dealing with the mothers after and the parents when they've had the children. Wow, that is challenging. But uh, so far, I've not attended it one. And I, I don't know whether my team could have come across them. But for me, this statement crosses it all, eh? that for us, regardless of your sex, regardless of your color, regardless of the education status, regardless of whichever way you are, we are trained to receive you the way you are. To an extent that I'm, I want to give an example, if I was someone who slapped me outside our gate, of the facility, and this person he came inside, being beaten or what, we are supposed to attend to the person because we have no choice. That is by training, we must save that life first because it might not be, he might be guilty. I mean, he might be innocent of what was had happened. So for the albinos, we are sorry if you have ever been discriminated in any way, but a, a healthy facility is supposed to receive any other person to receive you the way you are. But unfortunately, I think at the time of delivery, you know, all these children look alike. alike. So it may be an early time for us to discover that this child is a lubino for us to prepare the what? The mm -hmm. parents. But later on when they come, we should be able to attend to them. Mm -hmm. So the albinos, please, please come and seek services. They can even come to KCC facility. Okay, thank you very much. Um, very encouraging talking to you and hearing all this commitment that you have to service. I just wanted to also ask another um, question in as far as what I earlier raised about working with um, with these entities of people with disabilities going forward, given that you don't have capacity, how do you plan or what recommendations do you give to other institutions, including Kawala, in, in dealing with um, differently abled people through liaising and collaborating with entities that work with them? Like Vincent pointed, he talked in the area of peers, I mean, involving them. I think it is something I've taken note of uh, because in other areas of service like the HIV, we have uh, the, the teenagers, we normally use the peer approach. If for me now, if we are age mates, I believe when I talk to you, you can be convinced. When you say talk to a fellow youth, the youth can be convinced. And then it goes further to say, if we have the same conditions, then we can communicate the same language. So, meaning that for us in the HIV area, we floated people who were positive and say, you know what you went through and you are in a position to, to talk to the person and convince and come and save life. So, I think we can look into that, especially like the teenager, I mean, the disabled, if you send it to us and someone is able, maybe the other unique area is how to support this person to keep coming in terms of money. Me, I will say space is there, 
we can bring you to, to be on the front line so that when you see your own colleagues, you are able to follow and see that these people get what? Get services. Hmm. So, but it may go to the partners, it can go back to the government to see if there could be an allocation to cater for the people who come to, to be peers to the rest of the world. The rest of your colleagues. Oh, thank you very much. We are we have uh, three minutes to go, and uh, before I ask Sister Ajirong to give us her parting words, I'd like to come back to you, Vicent. Uh, well, in thirty seconds or one minute, uh, how do you wrap up this program? What are your recommendations? <laughs> Is your wife expecting? But it's in process. Eh? <laughs> Thank you very much, Vincent. I look forward to, to becoming a grandmother, seeing you at Kawala. So have you changed your mind about taking the, your wife to the TBAs? <laughs> okay, that's very encouraging. Sister, it's been wonderful having you. I'm so proud of the work you do. You, you are amazing. You're an RMC champion. I hope White Ribbon Alliance is watching. And uh, I know you. they celebrate you a lot. What's your parting words? And to the people hearing us and going forward. Mm. Uh, in my submission, we, I want to say... We have less than one minute, yes. Um, there are areas that we would like to improve in our maternity care and uh, the areas we have pointed out is the first visit of antenatal. You know, for us to, to bring everything to quality service, we must start owning this patient. We must start owning the mother early so that we are able to monitor you right from, maybe we normally say as soon as you conceive. We should be we should own you so that when you're saying headache vomiting and the rest we are able to keep talking to you so we encourage the community the community has not yet understood the importance of coming for first antenatal visit which is supposed to happen as soon as you realize you have signs of pregnancy to three months imagine as early as that but that has a lot of component i mean a lot of vital kind of assessment that we do, including protecting the abnormalities. The commonest abnormalities that happen, happen in this first three months. So imagine if you have not come early, because there is a drug, we call it folic acid. We sometimes I, uh, encourage these mothers to start swallowing those drugs as early as three months, so that they are able to protect the baby from any abnormalities before we can come to abnormalities. That is my strongest point. And then we have been in, the Minister of Health advocates for eight antenatal visits. We are doing well with the fourth. We are trying with the uh, fourth, fourth plus. Someone who has come four times plus. That one is also fairly doing well. But the eighth one, you know, the minister said this one must be coming until how many times? Eight mm. times. That one we're also not doing very well. Please, our dear listeners, our dear mothers, come, continue accepting what we tell you so that we can all together with you come up with the quality life. We can come up with a life baby and a life mother. 
Thank you very much, sisters. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe at the risk of even failing to speak because what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Some of the disabilities could probably actually be eliminated or avoided. And this is the role you can play as a mother, you, a role you can play in your respectful communities. I'd like to thank the technical team. Thank you very much. My guests, thank you very much. I know some of these people want to be mentioned. So the person who was on Kana Angel, Josephine Oz, I'd like to thank Chris for liaising with the technical team and coordinating Alan Sozi on, on the mixer and Eva Bumushare. Well done, well done to everybody, to the people, the journalists who joined us, the people who asked questions and to the audience. Please, uh, this will stay on YouTube Native TV International YouTube channel. We will later, after we've had all these series, run it on TV stations, but we'll also update you when we are running them on the TV stations. For now, spread the gospel share the people on facebook uh thank you very much like subscribe to our youtube channel share within your community sister we wish you journey masses when you go back visit thank you very much again until we meet you next week see you soon lovely weekend